Hello and welcome to Wager Don Tilt, everyone. I am T, and today I want to continue on the statistics and intro work that we've been doing. Now, today we're going to go back into Microsoft Excel and learn a couple of formulas and tips and tricks. Now, previously we did cover mean, median, mode, and standard deviation, I believe. We're going to cover a couple more and kind of do a refresher on some of those that we already learned. And then what I'm going to do is show you also how you can grab a quick snapshot of these statistics without actually having to write out all those formulas and figure them out. We're also gonna figure out how to use the frequency function. That way you can actually do this and categorize your information into bins very quickly. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the Excel. So I know I've covered this a little bit in the first video. However, I do wanna go back over some of these formulas. And then I wanna show you a nice little trick that you can use to try and figure out a little bit more info quickly without having to write all of these formulas out. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at some of these options that are available to you in Microsoft Excel. So we have the mean, median, mode. We can create a random probability. We can create random values. We can create a skew check. We can do the standard deviation and we can also do the variance. Let's go ahead and just quickly create a list of some random numbers. And we can do that by doing a random values. So if I come over here and we're to type equal, rand i can say rand array or rand between i'm just going to say rand between and i want my lowest value to be a one and my highest value to be a 50. so here you can see that it created a random number of 37 so i'm just going to go ahead and create a list here and every time you click around um, it's going to recalculate these formulas so if you want to actually keep these you're going to want to copy and paste the values in so let's just go ahead and do 10. Okay, so we have our random numbers, so I'm just going to right click, hit paste special values, okay, and that gets rid of the formula. So that is gone, and as you can see, every time I click into a cell, it recalculates this. So again, if you want to create uh, dynamic numbers that generate every time you tap, you'll just put equals rand between and then your lowest number and your highest number. So as you can see, this number keeps changing at the bottom for the random values, but now we'll just say equals average and then we'll go ahead and select these values and that gives us the average if we were to type in equals median select the values gives us our median again mode mode here is no longer just mode so i'm going to go ahead and choose mode single uh, returns most frequently occurring or repetitive value within the range so we're going to go ahead and use this one that gets us our mode now, this one doesn't have to necessarily deal with this set of values here. However, if you were to going to try and create a random value that you can use for a probability, uh, you can go ahead and start typing in a rand, and then rand is gonna return random numbers greater than or equal to zero and less than one. So what that means is it's gonna return basically a probability every time you tap enter. So we went ahead and did that. We'll hit enter. So if you don't wanna hit enter every time, you can hit F9 and it recalculates things in the sheet for you. So as you can see, these numbers just keep flipping. So the next thing you can do is you can check the skew of something. Now, the skew is gonna be in relation to the way the data lays out in a graph and its flow. Is it pushing heavier to the right, pushing heavier to the left? Is it a perfect bell curve, right? So we're gonna get into that a lot more down the road, but for right now to do this, you can just say skew, and then you would just select the data set that you have, and that will tell you your skew. Standard deviation, very similar. Again, you go to start typing in standard deviation. I use sample because I don't have a population. A population would be that you have all of the possible values. So if you were doing like say a company survey and you surveyed all of your employees and you have 100 employees and you have 100 responses, you could say population. But when you're using things like this for sports modeling and stuff like that, you don't really ever have a true population. A population is only when you have actually all of the population's information. Otherwise, just go with sample. It doesn't change it too drastically, uh, but it does matter when you're doing like really intense uh, science with the data. But again, you don't really need it that I have seen at least for sports betting. So let's go ahead and do this one. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the variance. So again, it's gonna be var. And again, you have the population or you can do the actual sample so we're going to do it with a sample and select the variance there you go so we have now our standard deviation our variance our skew two randomly generated numbers 
our mode, our median, and our mean. Now that you have these numbers, one thing that you can actually do is install an add-on. Um, you'll just go into File, Options, and then choose the Analysis Tool Pack, and you'll get that installed into Microsoft Excel. It is a free add-on. To get there, you would click your Data tab. You're gonna go over to the far right where it says Data Analysis, and you would select that. You get this little modal to open up right here, Data Analysis. Now I'm gonna choose descriptive statistics. I'm gonna select okay. I'm gonna choose my range. So if I come over here and I select the data that we listed, I'm gonna say it's in a column, right? So all my data is sitting here in a column. I want the output range to just be, let's pop it in right there. And I want a summary of the statistics. If I go ahead and click okay, it's now going to just give me all of this information that we went over here and actually calculated. So if you're gonna need a quick snapshot, I would recommend doing it this way, that we just grab all those values quickly. Otherwise, you can do it this way manually if you have these integrated into other formulas or into calculations or references and things like that. If you're using a lot of variables or random numbers that change per tap, I would stick with these formulas because they will change on the fly, whereas these values will not. They are static, they're printed in, and it's done. So here we can see a lot of the same information, right? We have mean, median, mode. Here we get a standard error, right? We have our standard deviation. We have our variance. Uh, we have the skewness, right? We have the range. We have the min, the max. We have a sum and a count. There's a lot of great info in there. So if you're working with a really big data set, you can use this to quickly find it. So let's go ahead and delete this out real quick. So now that we've been flipping through these a little bit here, let's go ahead and take a look at something else. So originally we said these numbers were gonna go one through 50. So I wanna create groupings. So I'm gonna say 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So the next thing I wanna know is how many kind of fall into each category or bucket, if you will. So these are considered bins. So I'm gonna go ahead and go one past our bin right here. And then I'm gonna click into the formula bar and I will go ahead and say equals frequency. And once that comes into a formula, it's gonna say data array. I'm gonna go ahead and select the data hit a comma, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select the bins that I have. All right, so those are the bins, and I'm gonna close my parentheses. Now to do this, you're gonna hit Control Shift Enter, and that will fill the formula down through those. So here, this is saying there is going to be one that is 10 or less. This is saying that there are zero from 11 to 20. This is saying there are six from 21 to 30. This one is saying 31 to 40 has two and 41 to 50 has one. So let's go ahead and sort this real quick. We're gonna just sort with this one right here, smallest to largest. Let's see if this holds true. Okay, that matches. There's none between these two numbers, so that matches. So there should be six before 30. All right, so that's six. Then we have the two that fall between going up to the 40. That makes sense. And then one before the 50, which makes sense, because again, it's between. So again, the re way to read these bins is it's what's between them. So this is another great way to quickly bucket your data and figure it out and see, oh, okay, I've got this many values falling within this range, this many falling within this range. And again, when you go to do this, you can flip these around. You'll notice in here that it puts this curly brace on this formula. That is because it is an array function. So it's gonna be functioning off of array data and being pasted in as an array. So when you wanna highlight this info, write your formula, hit Control Shift Enter, it will auto-populate that formula down and automatically put in the curly braces for you. If you don't hit the control shift enter, it's not gonna populate this all the way down for you and it's just not gonna work out right. So that is it. Like I said, this is pretty simplistic stuff. It's very intro to Microsoft Excel and statistics. So we're gonna build using this information over time. You're gonna be able to use models with this info. You're gonna combine formulas. You're gonna be able to use snapshots of the descriptive stats quickly. Rather than writing out all the formulas, just use the click, click, go, and then it gives you all the information up front. You don't need to constantly rewrite formulas for that. And then this is just gonna build the foundation and we're just gonna keep taking it one step at a time to get to our models. If you found this information useful, entertaining, or anything like that, feel free to like and subscribe. If you think this information would be helpful for anybody that you know that works on sports betting, sports modeling, uh, data analysis, things like that, feel free to drop them the link. That way they can learn and it will actually help push this to the top of the YouTube algorithm so people that are looking for this kind of content will find it. 
If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please drop a comment. I will respond. If you want to reach me directly, you can reach me in the unabated Discord as the T, or you can reach me on X at Wagered on Tilt. So that is it for the basics of some of the stuff that we're going to work on today. Until next time, happy wagering.